Hi there, I'm Michelle the Painter, and this is Paint and Sip at Home. Today, I'm going to be painting Blossoming Baltimore Oriole. <laughs> That's a tough one. This one, this painting I did today is inspired by a photo that was submitted by one of my Patreon members by the name of Bob Rutten. I have a benefit for my Patreon members whereby every now and again I'll put out a call for photos. They'll submit them and I will take a couple of them or a few of them and turn them into YouTube tutorials. And as a thank you, I will send the original painting off to whoever submitted the photo. So I hope that he enjoys this rendition of his photo. Um, if you're interested in learning how you too could submit your photos for me to turn into uh, tutorials and or learn more about the Patreon membership program where there's a bunch of additional benefits that you get to enjoy that will help to increase your painting and artistic skills. I have all of that information down below in the video description. So let's get painting and let's get sipping. All right, so for my materials today, I'm gonna to be using a stretched and primed 16 by 20 inch canvas. If you're painting along, you can certainly switch up the size, but that's what I'll be using. I'm gonna be using acrylic paint today. My colors are titanium white, cobalt blue, green oxide, deep yellow, fluorescent pink, Mars black, burnt umber, which I like to call brown, and fire red. And of course, you can switch up those colors if you'd like to. For my tools today, I have a white piece of chalk that I'm going to be using for some drawing. And then I have three brushes from my personal brush line, which is Michelle the Painter brushes. I have a three quarter inch wide flat bristle brush. I have a number 10 round synthetic brush and I have a number two round synthetic brush. And I may refer to these as small, medium and large as we go through the painting process, or I'll just call them out with their given name. <laughs> but you can of course switch those up as well. If you're painting along with me, you're probably gonna wanna have a cup of water for washing your brushes, as well as a paper towel for drying your brushes. And down below this video, in the video description, I do provide you with a few additional resources that can help you throughout your painting process. One of them is a link to my shop where you could purchase the same exact paint kit that I'm using from the same size and type of the canvas to the same type of paints and brushes and all the good stuff in between. You can also purchase from my shop things individually like the brushes from my brush line. So that's there. There's also a link where you can download a free image of the final painting. So you can print that and use it as visual reference as you go through the painting process. And there's also written step-by-step -step instructions down there for you as well. And that's all we're gonna need today. All right, so what we're gonna do for the first step is we're gonna be painting a base coat onto the canvas. I'm gonna be using my large bristle brush to paint, but I'm gonna use my medium number 10 round to um, pre, well actually, I'm gonna, sorry, I'm gonna use my number two round to demonstrate how to pre-mix two custom colors. So uh, the colors I'm gonna be using in this step are white, blue, brown, and black. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make myself a custom blue color and a beige. So the custom blue color, I think I'm gonna call dark blue because it's a little bit darker than my um, cobalt blue and it's on the grayer side so I'm just gonna call it dark blue because we might make a light blue later. <laughs> so I have pre-mixed the colors on my palette here so you can see where I'm heading when I uh, when I mix them. So this is my beige color which is a little off white and kind of just a very faint tan color. So how I achieved this is just white, mostly white and just a little bit of brown. So brown is gonna be my, um, my additive for to create this beige color. So you could really create a beige or an off-white with, with dirty paint. <laughs> so if you have leftover white paint and it's got a couple of dots of other paint colors in it, you can certainly create it. We're, I'm going for kind of a warm beige, which is why I use my brown, but you could of course make it into whatever you'd like. So once I've got that, I just need it a little bit darker than white is my 
my goal for that. The next color I'm making here is my dark blue. So how I achieved this is blue, black, and white. So I'm in essence taking my cobalt blue and I'm desaturating it with a mid tone gray, mid to light tone or mid to dark tone gray. So that's going to be quite a bit of black and a little bit of white is going to give me a mid to dark tone on my, that's a little bit too dark, so I need a little bit more white on my gray. And then I can mix it in with my blue. And that's going to give me this, oh, actually I need a little bit more white than that. It's a little bit too, too dark. Um, and that's going to give me this nice, soft, kind of smoky, dull blue, uh, grayish blue. And this will work out great for all of the out of focus kind of um, cool, atmospheric things that we're putting in the background as well as some shadows on the petals of the flowers. So that'll be that color. So once I've got those two colors established, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a very messy kind of gradient of sorts on my on my canvas for my base coat. So I'm going to be using the beige a lot up in the top right uh, kind of section of the canvas as well as the bottom left hand corner of the um, canvas and then I'll be using a lot of the blue in the middle. So I'm going to start with my beige. I don't really need to do any specific kind of brush stroke especially with uh, with the beige especially um, because that's going to be a pretty solid um, color on the on the canvas but when it starts to intermingle with the blue I will most likely use a um, a more uh, circular type of brush stroke. I'm bringing this a little bit further down than my halfway point on my canvas so somewhere in through here and then in the center I'm going to bring this about to the center in through here and then I'm going to bring it up into this top left hand corner. I am leaving a little bit of area up and through here because I'm going to put some of that blue up and through there and I am using a photo reference today as my inspiration so I am um, watching my photo to see where these nice light um, areas are and that's where I'm kind of giving myself that liberty to put this um, light beige color in those areas. So I've got a bunch down at the bottom as well in this bottom left hand corner and whenever I'm doing a base coat, um, especially with this particular photo that, that I'm working off of today, has a ton of detail in it. But I want to simplify it for a painting process. So I look, I'm looking for, um, when making the decisions as to what I'm going to be um, keeping and eliminating, I'm looking for those big kind of block color sections um, and the dominant colors that I'm seeing within the photo. So I've seen a lot of um, whites and blues, so that's where I'm headed with these base coats um, in these sections. So that's pretty good for the beige. Now I'm going to start picking up my blue without washing my brush. So I, this is my custom blue. So I'm going to start as I apply this, I'm going to be using this circular type of brush stroke. I can even intermingle it into some of these beige sections just to allow for this nice kind of out of focus transition. It doesn't have to be um, anything perfect. It, I'm just looking for something that's going to give me these soft intermingling sections of color. So if yours doesn't turn out in the same exact sections as mine, it's all right. We've got, I'm not going exactly one for one on this photo. I'm actually making this photo really just in a loose painterly style today. Um, not focusing on all the intricate details that are in the photo, just focusing on something that's going to be um, fun to paint and is going to give me kind of an impressionistic feel of the photograph. So that's good there. I'm going to put a big section down in, to, in this uh, bottom right section. Oh, that was a lot of paint. I'm going to put that off at the edge of my, on the outside edge. Um, and then again, I'm putting the blue on and then I'm going to, I just kind of um, use a circular brush stroke to get it to softly blend into that neighboring beige um, section. And again, soft, uh, it doesn't have to be 100% uh, blended. This is just going to allow us to 
um, intermingle some some out of focus leaves give the impression that there's um, some cool tones it almost looks like this is probably just early spring these these blossoming um, trees can have some cool tones in them because maybe it's a little chilly out there or they're you know being <clears throat> shadowed by that cool atmosphere so once you've got this done we are going to be using I feel like I want to use or get my bird in place for the next step so I'm, I'm going to use my drawing utensil for the next step so once you've got this done you can put this brush away, take out something to draw with, and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna draw an outline for our bird. I'm gonna be using my white piece of chalk. You can, of course, use any drawing utensil that is comfortable to you. I do recommend that your canvas is dry before we start this step as well, because it'll be easier that way. So I'm going to guide you through a series of markers we're gonna connect the markers, and by the time we're done, we'll have a very basic shape for our bird. We're not going for any fine-tuned detail, we just need some big block sections that we'll be able to color in during the painting process. So I'm gonna guide you to find the center of your canvas, top to bottom, left to right. So for me, I've already marked mine so I don't forget where it is or I don't lose it. So it's right in through here. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the right of that center mark about a half of an inch. Give myself my first marker. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back to the center and I'm going to go about halfway between that and the left edge of my canvas, which brings me about here. And then I'm going to go to the left of that about another half of an inch, something like that. I'm going to find myself back at the center of my canvas. I'm going to come down halfway between that and the bottom of my canvas, which takes me somewhere in through, I would say right about in through here, and then I'm gonna to go to the right of that just a little bit, maybe about a quarter to a quarter of an inch, something like that, or maybe about a half of an inch, because it looks like it's pretty much lined up with here where I want it to go. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna find myself back at the center of my canvas. I'm gonna go up about three inches and over to the left about three inches. So somewhere in through here. So what I have just done is given you four markers, one, two, three, four, that we're going to make into a shape of an egg. Because for me, a lot of times when I'm painting uh, birds, I like to start them in two basic shapes, a circle, which represents the head, and an egg, which represents the body, with the pointy part of the egg going towards the tail. So I've got, this one's gonna be a little bit tipped. So here we go. I'm gonna start in through, on this uh, right marker, I'm gonna bring it up, curve it around, hit that one, and then the pointy part of my egg is gonna be down towards that right. So I don't wanna just bring this down in a, in a diagonal uh, line. I wanna make sure I, I round it out. So I'm gonna bring this left side down and then start rounding it right about here. And then this one's just gonna be a very gentle kind of um, line going into that point. So that's the way I'm gonna shape that. Next thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to make myself a circle for the head, to start the head anyways. <laughs> so my circle, and just to give you, if you're working on the same size canvas as I'm working on, the widest width of my egg is about five inches and the longest length of my egg is about eight inches. So if you've downsized your canvas but it's still in a pretty uh, equal ratio, the length of that egg is about half the distance of my whole canvas. So my canvas is 16, half of that is eight, and that's the length of my egg. So just to give you a little information on that. So my circle I'm gonna have about uh, almost three inches, it's about two and a quarter inches across by tall, and I'm gonna have it sitting, um, if this is kind of the top center of my egg where we made this marker in through here, if I go up about an inch and over to the right about an inch, that could give me about the center of my circle, so somewhere in through here. And then what I can do, is, if I want it, it to be a circular shape, I'll go about an inch, um, a little over an inch and a half, up, down, and side to side. And that'll give me about a 
two and a half to three inch wide circle and then I can connect these four markers in the shape of a circle. So you're going to see that it overlaps my egg a little bit. So it overlaps my egg by about half an inch to three quarters of an inch. I do want to put a little beak on. So my beak is going to go directly across from the center point of my, um, of my circle and it's going to come out. Let me give you a little bit of a measurement here. Almost about whatever half the distance of your circle is, that's about as far out as the tip of the beak is going to go. And I'm just going to give myself just a little triangular shape in through here. The beak is going to come into that circle when we paint it, but we just need to know what the exterior shape of it is. And then around the head, I don't want it to look like a bobble head here, so I, I want to shape it um, similar to this style of bird. So uh, it's got a little bit more square of a forehead, so I'm just going to kind of bring this little area out, that top right area. And then from the top of the circle, I, I want this to blend down into the back. So I'm going to go from my, um, on like that shoulder area of where that circle meets the egg. I'm going to go to the left of that about an inch and a half, somewhere in through here. Now I can connect here to here with just an arcing line that's going to give me a more representational shape of that head. And then on the front part of the neck, I can just give a little curved line in through here. So I'm going to take my medium um, round brush with a tiny bit of water on it to erase some of these guidelines so you can see what exterior shape we just created there. So if I just take a little bit of water on my brush and erase these little interior lines, you now have a really well shaped um, profile or exterior shape of silhouette of the bird. So I also need to put a tail and a side wing on it. So my tail, well, let's do the wing first. My wing is going to be um, in, in the right side. I would say if you come back to the center of your canvas and go to the left about a half of an inch, that, and then um, maybe just bring it up, that line up just a little bit, maybe about a half to three quarters of an inch above that center mark. And then if I find myself down at the bottom of the egg, I'm going to go to the right of that, maybe about, um, I would say, an inch and a half, and make myself a little bit of a marker. So that's going to be the tip of the wing. So I can just take from here to here and give myself a curved kind of line to meet those two. And then over on the right-hand side, I'm going to do the same thing, just where this arc of the egg comes out. Just give myself this long kind of fun um, triangular shape. And then I'm going to have the tail coming out right underneath that wing. So you might not be able to see, um, I mean, we're not going for any fine-tuned details right now, just something that's going to help guide us. So this is just going to go right underneath that tail, or right underneath the wing tip. And then to the left of the egg, the point of the egg, I'm going to go maybe about an inch and a quarter-ish, somewhere in through here. This is going to be the tail coming down. To find out where I'm going to do the tip of my tail, if I just go straight down from the tip of my wing and stop about two inches away from the bottom of my canvas, that's going to be about the, the lowest point of it. So now I can take, and it's going to be kind of, uh, you can take this and just kind of ripple it a little bit at the bottom. And then I just make a diagonal line like this with a little curve at the bottom and a diagonal line like this with a little curve at the bottom. And of course you can take your, your paintbrush and erase any of those guidelines that you feel might, um, you know, might confuse you during the painting process. I can even get this going away. So something like that. And then we're going to be using this number 10 round brush for the next step. So you can just um, put your drawing utensil away, take out the 10 round and get ready for the next step. All right. So what we're going to do for the next step is we're going to paint the base coat of our bird. I'm going to be using my number 10 round brush. The colors I'm going to be using are black, yellow, white, red, and brown. I think that's all I'm going to be doing. Um, and what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be creating two custom colors for um, the start of the yellow, orangey, rusty color <laughs> feathers. I'm going to create an orange and a light yellow. I'm going to use my number two round to demonstrate how to premix these colors. 
So this one here on my palette is my orange. How I achieve that is, you can probably guess, yellow plus a little bit of red. And I just, it's the, the yellow con is more, con more uh, quantity than the red. The red, you just need a little tiny dot in order to steer this into a beautiful orange tone. And then I'm gonna make a light yellow. So this is about where I'm headed for the orange. Uh, wash my little mixing tool. And for my uh, light yellow, it's just yellow and white. So I am gonna want some very vibrant yellow tones in these feathers, in the chest feathers. And if I was to just put yellow on top of this blue, I'd end up with a green bird. And I don't want a green bird, I want a very yellow, orangey um, feathers. So I need to um, put something that's going to cover well. So this is where I'm creating light yellow with yellow and white. This will be my base color just to help me break through um, that background. I like to paint the background, the, the majority of the background first before I start building objects. So I don't find myself painting too much around it, but this particular one um, I know I'm going to be layering a lot on the feather, so I was okay with putting that darkness behind it as well. So once I've got those two colors, I am going to start with the yellow slash orange areas of the bird, which is going to be the majority of the chest and the tit and the tail. A little bit on the arm, on the, on the arm, on the wing as well. I'm going to start with my light yellow in through here. And then I'm gonna work my way out to the orange and then I'm gonna be using a little bit of brown and then going down into the tail. Most of the tail is gonna be hidden by a big like, um, area of flowers and leaves that are gonna go right in through here. Um, so I just need this for background color and then we'll do black on the head and part on that wing. So I'm gonna start with my light yellow color and this is gonna go right in this area in through here. You can put heavy paint, it's, it's okay. And if you can still see some of your background behind it, that's quite all right as well. I'm gonna put this in through here and then I'm also gonna put a little bit in um, what's gonna be the um, the wing, so a little bit in through here, and then maybe just a little sliver up in through here. I'm kind of just tapping my brush um, using a little bit of a directional brush stroke, which will benefit me later, but you might not even be able to detect um, those directions, but if you can, you're gonna wanna, you, I'm painting it around the bird, around the bird's belly. Um, when it goes to the wing, I'm just gonna be kind of going down and um, in a downward motion. So that's gonna be my, my light yellow section. Now I'm gonna pick up orange with my dirty brush and I'm gonna start introducing that orange. You can even pick up yellow with the light yellow with the orange and that's gonna give you um, you know, an, a very nice transition between the two. I'm gonna just bring this into the neck a little bit like this, leaving this little spot where the black is gonna, is gonna um, overlap, so something like that. And again, I've got the yellow and the orange on my brush right now. Bringing this down into this uh, underbelly kind of area. And I am overlapping because I know that um, these feathers, I want them to show multiple um, textures within them and that's the only way that I'm going to be able to um, achieve that with a nice believable way. I'm putting this down that tail in through here uh, just kind of not washing my brush allowing for this to intermingle and don't worry if it's not perfect. A again a lot of this particular area is going to be hidden anyways. As I get down towards um, the bottom of the tail I think I'm gonna pick up a little bit of brown with my burnt, or with the um, orange, so I can get a little extra darker tones down in through here. And again, we may, um, some uh, if there's little pops of this tail that um, they are gonna poke through the, the, um, the leaves and, and stuff that we're gonna, and the flowers that we're gonna put on will enhance and create um, some nice little pops of highlights on some of those, but right now I'm just gonna lay it in like that. I'm gonna pick up some more of that orange plus a touch of my brown to get over here on the left-hand side of the bird. So 
this is just orange and brown. This is going to add some nice um, textural, dimensional um, element to it. And again, later, this is just the, the beginning stages of it. And most of this belly is going to be hidden anyway. So that looks pretty good in through there. I feel like that's a, a nice start for me. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to... <laughs> I say it's a nice start, but then I'm like, no, I just want to keep painting. Um, once I've got this done, I'm going to wash my brush and uh, I'm going to put the black in the black areas of the of the uh, wing and on the head. So the only kind of trick to this when I'm I'm doing the black is when I go to overlap it or meet it next to these other feathers, I will just be using just the tip of my brush. Um, so, so I can get it to um, look like start the process of those feathers kind of overlapping one another. Um, on on this beak in through here, I'm going to go slow. I added a tiny bit of water to my brush in order to um, get some nice clean lines on the edges of the beak. So something like that, and I do leave a little bit of my um, exterior outline so that keeps me in check so I don't go too so I don't make my bird bigger than I initially wanted to but you can certainly bring your your paint all the way to the edges um, on the exterior edge especially on this left hand side I can start that also that little um, fluffy part of the um, of like the little neck feathers and stuff just kind of sticking out a little bit and that'll make that look nice and natural as well. And then I'm going to just get the top of the head before I move into where it meets the neck. And again, I'm using black plus a little bit of water on my brush. I'm slowing down so I don't make this larger than I want to. <laughs> Sometimes I just have to keep my myself in control, which is just slow down for a minute and you can get what you need to get done and it doesn't have to be faster than lightning. You can just go at your own pace. That looks good in through there. Just making sure I've got this shaped the way I want. And then down underneath um, where the neck lies. Again, I'm just following my, my chalk mark, but leaving <clears throat> a little bit visible so I don't lose where I wanted that initially. And again, black with a little bit of water on my brush. So in through in through these neck feathers, they're going to kind of lay down um, just right on top of those yellow ones, which will be yellow, orangey, rusty kind of tone by the time I'm done. So I'm just using the tip of my brush to pull these little wispy ones um, over, over the little yellow ones. And again, if you don't get it exactly as um, mine is right off the bat that's okay it's a layering process you can you can when we go into the next um, when we go into adding more feathers onto the onto the body and kind of finessing the tones and the values you can certainly um, add to this little um, edges the little wispy edges. And then coming down this right hand side, the right hand side is going to be pretty, uh, pretty smooth. It doesn't have to be super duper smooth, but it can definitely be on the smoother side. Again, a lot of this is going to be kind of tucked behind um, the some flowers and stuff, some little blossoms. And then coming in through this left hand side, again, just kind of not making it super straight, just allowing for it to take on a pretty organic type of a, of appearance. This particular one, the black feathers are going to be underneath these yellow feathers. So I'm going to do a similar brush stroke to where I did on the neck, but I'll, I also know that when I go to do my second layer of the yellow feathers, they I'll get them to overlap this little section as well. So again using a similar thought process but knowing that those yellow ones are going to be overlapping the black ones um, which is kind of reverse what's happening on the neck and then i'm just going to bring this all the way down and there's also going to be a, a little white stripe on um, this wing as well or some white areas on the wing too so i know that those are coming and then in through here again just kind of slowing down so i can get those little 
fluffy marks to start. Um, again, not necessary to get them all the way, but just starting the process will help out. And then once I've got this done, I am gonna be using this same brush for the next step. So once you've got it done, you can wash and dry this medium round and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're going to finish our out of focus background. I'm gonna be using my number 10 round brush and I'm probably using all of my colors. It, um, yeah, I'm using white, black, brown, pink, probably not red, um, green, cobalt blue, my dark blue, my light yellow, my beige, if I use any other colors, I'll let you know, but I think that's pretty much all the colors. Um, so what I want to do is we're going to be having some flowers up front uh, in the foreground with some leaves. And there's also going to be a couple of pink and like purpley blossoms in the foreground. But I want the background to emulate that. But I'm not going to, I don't want to get lost in the details. So I'm really going to just say, okay, here I'm going to make my out of focus flowers. So whatever colors I'm going to use in my flowers, which are white, beige, yellow, um, brown, that's where I'm going to put, and some green for my, um, for the little leaves. I'm going to concentrate that stuff over here where I, like down below there's, I'm going to have some darkness. Maybe it's being shadowed underneath the flowers. So I, I'm going to be using a very kind of loose impressionistic type of brush stroke to just emulate kind of color patterns in order to say, okay, that's the out of focus stuff of what's going to be in the front. So whatever I'm using in the, in the foreground, which is going to be different shades of green for the leaves and whites for the flowers and pinks and purples, I will use those in the background to just say, okay, that's this stuff out of focus. I do want to, um, do a couple of purposeful um, areas in order to get my bird's head to pop out. Um, so I'm going to have the bird's beak is going to be a, uh, it's going to have a little bit of darkness at the top, but it's going to be pretty light. So I'm actually going to purposely put a dark area around the, um, the beak, which is in fact in the photograph. And I think it really works because it allows that, that front part of the face to pop out. And I'm also going to be putting some light, uh, green leaves behind the head um, in order to make that whole thing pop out. The rest of the area I think works pretty well the way it is. We're going to have some foreground leaves and stuff, um, but I'm going to start with some green areas and then we'll work our way towards the light. So I'm going to start with a little bit of green and a touch of black on my brush to get this um, this area in through here taken care of that I know I'm going to want later. So I just have green with a little bit of black on my brush and again out of focus. So really I'm just looking to do a color um, placement, color pattern similar to what I'm seeing in the photo but I don't need it to be exact. I don't want to lose where I have the edge of my beak so um, I'm, I'm having it dark but it doesn't need to go all the way black. And then I can just take this and if there's other areas that I want dark, I can do that. Or I can just kind of rub it out. I'm going to have some other stuff back there as well. I want to, before I move elsewhere, I kind of want to get those two light green areas in through there. So I can, um, I'm going to wash my brush and I'm just going to use that light yellow plus a little bit of green on my brush. Light yellow plus a little bit of green just to get these, um, these light green areas back behind this head. So something like this, and then maybe I think there's one over in through here. And again, yours does not have to be exactly, exactly like this. Um, but I, in the, in the photo, I really liked how these kind of, um, allowed that head to pop out. So we're going to just do that. I don't want it to look like he's got ears on his head though. <laughs> I'm going in for some of my dark blue right now, just to, um, kind of get break up those two little green spots so they don't look like um, earmuffs or something like that. And we're going to have um, some 
uh, foreground leaves and sticks and stuff coming up there too. So that's going to be that area, uh, picking up just a little bit more green and uh, my light yellow maybe in through here. So in order to just kind of emulate what I'm seeing in the picture without getting too lost in the details, I'm just kind of looking for these color patterns. So I do see some more of the green and a little bit of black and I'm, I'm seeing it kind of like over in through here. Again, I'm just gonna go with these messy kind of sections. I've got some uh, down over on this right hand side, a little bit of green in through here, maybe a little bit of my light yellow, just to give me a couple of little green, different green tones. I've got a little green and light yellow up little section up in through here and I'm just kind of using the paint and wiggling my brush. I'm not doing anything super fancy. I see some green up in through here so I'm going to just put some green up in through there. Down in through here this is going to have a lot of foreground stuff so I don't really need to do much in through here. I'll probably put some more blue but I'm going to kind of focus on the green first. I'm picking up some green with a little bit of black. I feel like I want to put some down in through here. Ooh, maybe a little bit more black something like this so we can have a nice kind of dark area down in through here and then again just kind of wiggle in my brush i'm trying not to have really firm edges but if i get firm edges that's totally okay uh, i think that looks pretty good so now i'm going to just start moving into my bluer areas i'm not going to wash my brush i'm going to just pick up some of my dark blue right now and just kind of uh, wherever i see some darker areas i see some dark dark blue areas somewhere over in through here. This is going to add to that background. We laid down the base coat of the bird um, early so that way I didn't overpaint this background. I knew I didn't want to get lost and overpaint it so I uh, purposely put that bird on there to prevent me from overpainting, which I knew could very easily be done on this um, and I didn't want to run that risk. So that's why that kind of got laid down. One of the reasons why it got laid down a little early uh, over on this left side, I do feel like um, I, it would benefit me to put a little bit more of this dark blue underneath uh, the belly in through here and maybe a couple little spots. Uh, we're gonna have again those flowers which will, um, the foreground flowers, which will pop really well if you've got some dark spots down in through here. So that's where I'm um, mindful that I want to put some of that in there. You can even pick up some of your dark blue plus a touch of white. That'll give you a little bit, uh, you could use your beige too, but I'm going to go white and that'll give me even a, a couple of different tones in through there. So again, just adding adding some variety so i've got my my dark blue plus a little bit of my white on my brush and whatever remnants of the green were on there as well um, i feel like there's a little spot up and through here so i'm going to put a little spot up and through here and then once i've got my blues on there now i can start concentrating on what would be the out of focus um, pieces of the flowers back there so i know that those are they're going to be uh white flowers with kind of yellow um, centers to them. So I can take a little bit of my brown and my beige, so brown and beige, and I can almost give myself a couple of little like darker areas. These would represent kind of in between the flowers. So these would be the shadows between the flowers in the out of focus background. Um, so I'm kind of doing very organic type of um, marks to just give myself the illusion. Ah, I think I want some green up here too. I think I'm going to pick up some green. I feel like I've missed a spot, a big spot of green that would work, that would benefit me to have. So we just picked up some green and put it on. <laughs> um, and then again, go back to my um, brown and beige. And maybe there's a couple of these little areas in through here just with a darker tone so that looks pretty good down and through here these are going to be all my in focus kind of flowers but if i felt that you know i wanted to stick anything back here with that brown certainly you know whatever you feel would would work out and then um i'm going to kind of just work my way to the lighter flowers but i think i want to put a little bit of the centers on right now so i'm going to pick up a little bit of my 
uh, light yellow and just kind of pop in some some little mushy sections of the light yellow maybe a couple over here you can even pick up a touch of that orange that might look great around the exterior areas of that little yellow section again i'm just having fun i'm not um i'm not worried about making this anything perfect just out of focus and once i've got that on i can start picking up some white so the white is gonna allow me to um, just get the illusion of um, maybe those exterior petals allow everything to just kind of mush together because that's what's gonna allow this to really just look out of focus i don't again want it to look anything other than out of focus i don't want the attention to be brought to uh, this background. I am just looking for it to be um, the, uh, just the background noise <laughs> for lack of a better terminology. So as I'm going through this, I'm just saying, well, these are similar colors. I can just add these, you know, similar type of shapes. I, I called it a color pattern, but it's also the, the shape that's involved. Um, because they are kind of representing the flowers. So I am trying to kind of make them in a circular type of way. There's leaves in there too. So, you know, kind of um, allowing yourself the freedom to just, um, again, play. I'm, I'm looking at the photo and I'm saying, okay, well, I'm seeing some darkness up here. I'm seeing some lightness back here. But again, this is my background uh, my out of focus background so I don't I'm not concerned about it being perfect uh, you know I'm just concerned about having a layer on here um, I didn't end up using my cobalt blue yet but right now I'm just kind of using all of these other tones I'm going kind of flipping back and forth between my um, my white and my and my beige to get some tones in through here I'm thinking that that's that's really fun. <laughs> you can also pick up some pink if you wanted to. I'm going to have some pink blossoms. So if I found a spot where I wanted maybe just the illusion of a little pink, you know, out of focus piece, maybe I got a little one down here, just popping in those little those little hints of of color will um, when we get the in focus colors in that will help to to um, make it really just speak to that background. You you know, as you're doing this, oh, I just put some more pink on there and I, I like it. <laughs> so you can really just enjoy the process. Don't overthink it, have fun with it. And then once you've got it into a place that you're satisfied with, again, don't worry about it being perfect. Just, you know, have that color pattern to go. Um, you can once you've got it in that in that place that you're okay with, we are going to be using, um, what are we gonna do for the next step? Oh, we're gonna use the same brush for the next step. So you can just uh, wash it and dry it. And you could even, you know, pop a couple of little marks in the center of these two if you wanted to, if you wanted to really, this is orange, I just put on my brush just to <laughs> give just that little, kind of illusion of the interior. This is hard to stop, but I'm going to stop. I just picked up a little bit of brown. <laughs> and uh, once you've got this done, wash and dry this brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna do the base coat for the foreground flowers. I'm gonna be using my number 10 round brush. The colors I'm gonna be using are cobalt blue, white, beige um, and my dark blue. I think that's it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to premix a light blue color and we're going to be uh, really loosely putting in where we want our large flowers or our front flowers to go. So I have premixed my light blue color here on my palette. How I got to that is just my dirty white, <laughs> good use of the dirty white, and a little bit of my cobalt blue, just a touch. I don't need it to be um, super vibrant, like even that's too much, so I'm going to add some more white into it. I can get some clean white. I don't really need clean white, I just don't want yellow white. So there we go. I could even just add a little bit, I'm going to add a little bit of my beige to it, because that's just white and brown. So that'll give me a, a nice pastel -y light blue color. So I'm going to use this 
as part of my um, as part of that base coat. I'm going to use the light blue and the beige as my dominant colors for the base coat of these flowers and then I'll pop in a little bit of white. I will also use my dark blue for a couple of of the flowers that are going to be up top because they look in the photo like they're in some shadow. So I'm going to start by um, using my light blue to put in place some of the main flowers that I see right in front of um, the the bird in this area here. So these are just these nice kind of blossomy type of flowers that are on early spring trees. You could of course model yours after whatever kind of style of um, blossoms that you want. It'll be totally up to you. So you can use, I'm probably going to alternate back and forth between that light blue um, and the beige. So I'll show you how um, how these colors can kind of interact with each other. I'm now picking up my my beige. So if I want one to look like it's kind of in front of another, just using that beige next to the light blue will help me identify one flower as um, different from the other flower. And I'm just kind of looking at the, the photo and seeing where I see um, just the exterior shapes of these bigger front flowers. Um, they are going to be surrounded by leaves later, but I just kind of want to have kind of these massive flowers. There's a big like um, bushel of them, bushel, I don't know if that's the right word, <laughs> in through here that's going to have some big green leaves on top of it. So I'm just going to kind of put a kind of a mass of um, of white petals or of these lighter petals in through here and try and give it the um, the area in which I'm seeing it um, in the photo. So it's kind of coming to the left of the tail, it crosses over the tail, and all of these little edges just kind of have these little these little bumps to them. Um, so that's what I'm trying to to emulate. I see that there's one that kind of comes out over here. And of course yours don't have to be exactly as mine. I'm just kind of trying to put them in a similar place that I see them um, in the photo. So and I always am looking as to where like the tip of the flower is in relationship to something else. So I found where the tip of this one is and then the next tip to me is down a little bit and out to the right. So those are just little um, little guides that you can you can help utilize for yourself. And again this is going to be a bunch of of leaves in through here kind of overlapping the flowers but I want the um, the flowers themselves to to have um, their color to them and have the leaf kind of just overlap it. So I'm going to just go in with these um, with this off white or beige color and light blue to to help um, start my process in through there. So that looks pretty good in through there because this is going to be a big leaf and it's going to just hang over and there's a little one there and there's a, another one here. Okay, that looks pretty good. So I've got a lot of uh, some really big ones over and through here. So again, just going for my um, light blue on my dirty brush and I will, especially when I've got a beige area right in through here, that light blue is going to help me just identify that as um, as its own flower so I don't get confused uh, with my with my background and I'm not doing anything fancy to the leaves right now or the petals just kind of getting that exterior shape um, in place. There's a couple, let's see, up in through here I've got one in through here and here and again yours don't have to be exactly as mine the, and there's some that overlap so like there's two in through here and then there's a couple that behind it so I can just use that beige as the as the as the flower that's underneath it so that's where these two colors are going to really help to um, just get you to build it in a um, non-scary way. <laughs> Sometimes flowers can be very um, intimidating to paint because there's so many pieces to them. Um, but if you can just, uh, like what I'm doing here is I'm trying not to um, get too confused with what I'm seeing. So I am just taking um, the photo and I'm saying, okay, well I see a big one in through here so I'm just going to put that basic 
um, mass of, of color in through there, and then I can work leaves and stuff around it later. Down in through here, this is a bunch of, um, bunch of little petals and flowers and stuff, so and I'm very carefree. I don't need to do anything down here other than just kind of make sure those colors are in there. I've got a couple down in through here, so again, just kind of giving myself, if I'm seeing a little bit of a lighter area, I can put that. Um, I could, if I wanted to, especially down in through here, if I'm seeing more blue in the um, in the photo, I can just pick up a little bit of that dark blue um, and just create a darker area down in through here, which I feel it has. So I just created that area. Uh, that's pretty good in through here. These are all going to be, there's lots of big leaves in front of here. So I might almost just wait to see how the dust settles in this area if I'm going to need to actually put anything else. But um, we'll come back with a final kind of little cleanup and make these flowers look more realistic, but this is where we're starting. Um, I'm going to pick up some more of my light blue. I got a big one in through here. Uh, I see some petals like this, and then this one's going to kind of just bump into this one. So I just picked up some of the beige. There's a fun one kind of in through here that I'm seeing. That one's going to be fun because it's got a little stem. It looks like just a little tiny blossom that's not fully opened yet. Picking up some more of my light blue. There's a big one up in through here by the head. And again, as you're going as you're going through your own, yours does not have to emulate every single flower that I'm putting on here. Again, I'm using a photo reference to steer me into where um, where these where these blossoms are and stuff, but you can make yours any anywhere that you want. Um, there's a bunch of out of focus ones back in through here, so you don't really need to do anything right now um, as you go through the through the detail process if you find that you want to make any more um, any further detail back in through here, you certainly can, but I might just leave that up in through here. I see a couple of dark blue ones or darker blue ones. So I'm just picking up some of my dark blue on my dirty brush. Um, I've got one kind of in through, well, there's a, there's a big one, a big one up in through here. So I'm going to just kind of make that. This is coming down in through here. So again, just kind of watching, watching the photo and just allowing for, um, to follow a similar color pattern, but again, it doesn't have to be exactly. There's a couple of um, the blue ones up in through here. And if you felt that you wanted the blue to be different than the background blue, you could certainly, I'm gonna show you how to make this blue look different. You could wash and dry your brush. If I used my um, cobalt blue and just white, that's going to give me a more vibrant blue. You can see how much more vibrant that is. You could also use um, the cobalt blue with a touch of red in it. So if I use cobalt blue and a touch of red, that's going to make the cobalt blue look a little more um, purpley and more like ultramarine blue. So you could, let me just make sure I got it where I want here to show you. So if you wanted to have different shades of blue, you can certainly play with the um, the tone or the shade of it by adding or taking out, we had black and white in the cobalt blue. You could just use cobalt blue plus white and that'll give you um, that different um, color or you could use cobalt blue with a touch of red in order to get it into like a more purpley or um, ultramarine type of type of color. So I think that that looks pretty good for my for my start of my flowers. I am going to be using um, we're going to have little tiny blossoms too with um, with pink and uh, we'll make a custom purple. But right now I think I'm going to go on to the next step, which is going to be with this number 10 round brush. So you can just wash it and dry it and get ready. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna paint the base coat for the foreground stems and leaves. I'm gonna be using my number 10 round brush to paint, but I'm gonna use my number two round to premix two more custom colors. So in this step, I will be using deep yellow, green, black, and white. Um, I think that might be it. 
If I use any other colors, I'll let you know, because I just need a base coat for these guys. So I'm going to make a light green and a dark green. So I have pre-mixed them on my palette, so you can see where I'm headed. So this is my light green. How I achieved this is green, oxide, yellow, and white. Did I say I was using white? <laughs> I meant to say I was using white. I don't know if I said it. I was using white, but I am. Um, and I'm making this nice, light, almost like a lime green kind of color or a mossy kind of yellowy light green. So that's going to be that color. And then my dark green is going to be a super fun way to create dark green. I'm not using green oxide. I'm going to use yellow and black. So uh, the properties of the yellow, when you put a touch of black into it, will turn green. So I'm going to make my dark green that way so the, they are two very different um, shades of green and it'll make for a great variety on my canvas. So now I have dark green, my mid-tone which is my green oxide, and my light tone which is my light green. So I'm going to put my mixing tool away. Um, I'm going to be using black um, for my stems, where I want my, my stems to go, maybe black and some dark green. Um, we'll add more to this later. We just want to get something on here that's going to um, provide us that place, that jumping off place. So I'm going to have some stems and dark leaves up and through here. Um, and then there's some a couple of, there's a couple of dark leaves in through here and some other leaves kind of just popping out. There's a bunch of big leaves down in this area. And then there's a couple uh, in the photo. There's one sticking out here. There's one sticking out over here. So we'll just put them in place. Again, no super fancy, tricky stuff here. Just want to get them in place. I'm not going for, again, a photorealistic painting here. I'm just going for something really fun. <laughs> so I'm going to pick up some of my black because I want to put um, some stems in place. I've got a big one coming back above the head in through here. I'm putting a little bit of water on my brush too so I can get some clean edges to this. It actually goes right behind um, that green section that I just <laughs> bumped into. Um, so I'm going to just kind of stop it right in through here. And this is, um, I'm going to make that into a foreground leaf. So I'll, I'll make that a little bit fancier later. I'm going to put a little bit more black on my brush. I do have some um, greenery stems in through here which I'll do with um, green but I'm going to put this is like the tree branch I would say um, so I call it a stem but it's probably a branch seeing as the bird sitting in a tree so I'm going to put that in through there and then I've got um, looks like there's one kind of coming out down in through here so we're going to put this little guy in place in through here and you could certainly put them elsewhere if you thought that you know you wanted to have a couple just kind of popping in you know various spots you could certainly put little little pieces here and there but I don't really need to do much for that so I'm going to wash and dry my brush and I think I'm going to start with my um, some of my darker leaves and then we'll work the way work our way to the light so I'm going to just pick up some of that dark green I do see a bunch of um dark leaves up in through here so I'm gonna there's one kind of almost right above the head in through here so I'm gonna put that in place there's um, a big kind of section behind here so I'll put that in place this kind of scoops around here behind this little flower in through here so this is almost gonna be behind the front little stems I'm gonna put on just kind of putting this little area in through here with my dark green. I might actually later um, add a bit of uh, like a greenish blue to these darker ones. So they um, kind of sit back and take on a little bit more um, atmospheric dimension with the with bluish hues to them. But right now just going to kind of put them in with this dark green. There's a few dark green ones over in through here. So I'm just going to kind of pop these on and it looks like these like some of these leaves are small some of them are big they look like they're kind of that um, like a teardrop kind of shape so you can really have fun with um, with forming them whatever way that you the way that you want um, I'm gonna put some stems on 
in a minute for those guys. I've got a couple of dark ones um, down in this region here, so this is going to go behind the bird. Um, and again, I'm modeling this after a photo. So for me, it's you know, the process of saying, oh, I'm going to put a leaf here is easy because I can see where it is in the photo. If you want to go more kind of rogue on this, you put them wherever you want. You can have them, you know, displayed any which way. There's, uh, there's one sitting over here, so I'm going to put that one in. And again, I'm using the, I'm going for the darker ones first, and then I'm going to kind of work my way to the lighter ones. Looks like there's, um, a pretty dark one underneath this little guy in through here and this sometimes um, adding these darker um, leaves and stuff in between the bright flowers really helps to make the flowers pop um, and gives them um, more stability in in the composition uh, we've got a big brighter one here I think I want a dark one maybe behind this stem so something like this so this is also where I start to um, kind of use space fillers as well um, there is a little there's kind of a big one in front of this tail but I don't really want to take up all the tail so I'm just going to kind of put a little piece of it kind of coming out like that um, I feel as though I can start to Add, so add the lighter ones in a second here. So it's another dark one, a little dark area over there. So now that I've got my dark ones in, I'm going to start adding some lighter ones. Um, I am going to not wash my brush and I'm just going to pick up green oxide. So I'm going to progressively get lighter and lighter. So um, up top, I think that there should be maybe um, this kind of mid-tony one. Uh, let's put this kind of right in through here. This one we're just kind of seeing the sliver or the side profile. Well, it's kind of like cupped at the top and then it kind of leans over that way. Um, this, we've got some stems and stuff. I'll put those on in a minute. I've got some mid-tone ones back in through here. There's one in through here. So I'm I, you could certainly also draw these out, but I think sometimes, especially if you're going kind of carefree as I'm going, sometimes if you draw them out, you may um, overdo it. <laughs> you might overdo the details and it can get pretty um, frustrating sometimes, I, at least for me anyways, to um, have to follow every single little petal and leaf and stuff. So. For me, I'm just trying to find the more dominant ones um, and allowing them to kind of take over the, the focal point of, um, of that particular object, of the, of the leaves. Um, and then I'll just, with the background or the um, other areas, if I feel that there's any areas that need more space fillers and stuff like that, I can certainly do that. Um, after I get the the majority um, put in place but I find again for me trying to do lots of tiny details um, for me can get a little bit overwhelming so I try to simplify things and try and take the the approach that works best for for my brain that I don't get too confused about um, and a lot of times that's just, you know, where are those big basic shapes, find the dominant color and kind of progress from there. Um, I feel like that's a, a good amount for like my mid-tone stuff. Maybe, maybe another little kind of one popped in through here. Well, I think I need another flower in here too. Um, oh, maybe in through here too. So I'm still working on the mid-tone ones. I'll get to the, to the lighter ones in a second, I think. Uh, oh wait, there's a big one kind of coming underneath this this flower and coming all the way down to here. There we go. I'm going to, um, oh, and it goes behind the tail here. <laughs> Something like that. So I think I'm going to um, now start picking up some of that lighter light green um, and start adding. Again, I didn't wash my brush. So because I didn't wash my brush, this will allow... 
um, varying tones to, to occur. So I've got the mid-tone on my brush right now and now I'm kind of intermingling these lighter um, leaves into the equation and you can see uh, if you if you look closely enough, you can probably detect that there's a couple of different tones kind of uh, releasing themselves from my brush. This is that lighter one that I think I actually want a little bit even lighter than we had made initially. That looks good. Those look good. Oh, maybe this needs to come down here a little bit. Um, and again, we will put more detail on these later. Maybe it looks like there's a little light one kind of popping out in through there. That looks good. Um, and I'll put stems on in a minute as well because the stems are up there are going to have some light tones to them. I've got a little, actually there's a little leaf kind of um, popping out behind this guy in through here, which is fun. So that's of the lighter tone. And then I have this big huge one coming out over here of the light tone and oh I've got a one popping out on top of that one too this is so so fun with all these fun leaves and this one kind of just scoots like that I'm gonna pick up the mid-tone for a second because there's uh, another little side to this one it just scoots behind there and then there's a big huge one right in through here right on top of this this uh, flower petal which is awesome just give us some some great dimension in through there uh, I've also got one right in through here I'm gonna pick up the light this is going right behind that tail so this is the light tone on my dirty brush I don't like to wash my brush because for various reasons um, but the biggest reason is that it helps tie all my colors together um, I'm going for some light in through here. Let's see, I've got a big one coming down here and then there's one right in through here. So this is really fun because now you can see that it's starting to fill in all of these spaces. Um, I've got, this one looks like it kind of comes and curves right underneath this flower in through here and it's pretty light. So even though I'm only using three tones right now with, um, allowing these um, these leaves to really have some some varying um, tones to them with going from the dark this is my darkest to my lightest it really allows for um, some great dimension to, to happen uh, let's see uh, oh and the bottom side of this one we've got light green coming on the bottom side of this one so this is all one leaf right in through here with one side being lighter than the other and again because I, I'm using a type of paint that is uh, transparent in nature because it's a student grade paint this will take a couple of passes in order to um, get it into a place that is um, pleasing to my eye I feel like there's a couple little guys in through here we've got this guy taken care of and we've got those guys, that guy, just kind of giving my eyeball around here. I think I've got, oh, can't forget this little fella over here. <laughs> Sometimes it's the, it's the little tiny ones that, that can get away from you. Just little cute one in through there. I think I want the mid-tone, so that's the green oxide. Um, and of course, you can use whatever um, colors that you want. I think I'm going to pick up a little bit of the dark green. There's a little dark green on this side of this guy. Um, so... Now that I've got the, the leaves in place and the big branch, I feel as though I need to put a couple of stems uh, from the leaves. So I'm going to pick up some of my uh, light green uh, to do this guy in through here. So this is, looks like we've got um, a stem kind of, I'm just going to kind of freestyle this and let happen whatever's going to happen. I'm <laughs> going to pull some down in through here. It looks like it kind of scoots behind here with that dark green and something like that will totally work for me. Picking up a little bit of the dark green because I feel as though there's a couple of little stems back here. So you can put these in front or behind the, um, the, the, the other um, areas, whatever works for you. Picking, and again, I haven't washed my brush. I just am using 
whatever the remnants on my brush are. Uh, picking up a little bit of my light green, I feel as though this guy up and through here is going to have some fun stuff kind of popping up over in through here and along for that to happen. And then once you've got this, you know, into a place that is pleasing to your eye, I feel like that little flower deserves a stem. Again, you can modify it whatever way that you want. Uh, we are going to be using the small round brush, the number two round for the next step. So you can just get ready. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna finish the bird's head. I'm gonna be using my number two round brush. The colors I'm using are black, white, cobalt blue, and maybe some of that light blue, and maybe some brown. Black, white, brown, cobalt blue, and light blue. If I go into any other colors, I'll let you know. So, oh, and red too. I want red too, definitely. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna first kind of mark out where I want the eye and the beak to go. So I'm gonna use a touch of brown and white on my brush. So just a touch of brown and white. You could even use it with a little bit of water on your brush. We just need something to kind of sketch out where we want them. So the eye is gonna go pretty much dead center of this where you had made that original circle. So somewhere in this vicinity and I'm just going to kind of light sketchily give myself a little kind of circle to to work from and then I'm going to do the same thing where I want the beak so the beak is going to um, come into the face a little bit we already have how far down it's going to go and pretty much how high up it's going to go so if you take uh, and extend this high up spot just a little bit into the face give yourself a, a vertical line that almost comes down to the bottom of the eye and then you can give yourself a diagonal line just make sure we can see that diagonal line down almost to the eye so the edge of the eye is here so you're just a little bit shy of that and a little bit below it and then I can give myself a little horizontal line a kind of a curved outward vertical line and then this can go back and meet the bottom of the beak. So that just gives us a good kind of shape for the beak. Um, and we will we'll put some more fun stuff on it. So once I have that, I'm going to use my, I'm not going to wash my brush. I'm going to pick up some of my light blue and with a touch of water on it because water will help me <laughs> with my small lines. I'm going to paint the majority of this but of this beak with this light blue I'm just gonna take well that's not blue enough hold on I'm gonna wash my brush because the brown overtook it I wanted it to be a little bit more blue than that so I'm gonna use a little bit of cobalt blue in my light blue so we'll get it just a little bit more bluish because the beak is shiny and it's reflecting the environment so I'm making it a little bit more light blue something like this and I don't need it to be a solid color. So as I'm moving towards the beak, the tip of the beak portion, maybe I pick up a little bit of black on my brush. So this will get it to go a little bit darker, but not black. You could, you know, adjust it whatever you want. I could pick up maybe a little bit, a uh, little bit more of my light blue, just so we can have it visible. Um, but whatever you feel works in that vicinity. And then when I get to the top, I'm going to pick up more of my cobalt blue to lay right on top of that black because that's going to make it look super duper shiny and make it look like it is reflecting the, the atmosphere. And then once I've got it painted in, I'm just going to kind of um, get these edges to kind of go into the um, well, I'm going to pick up a little bit of black first so I can make sure that that top side is fully painted in. I feel as though I might be losing the little tip as well. So I'm going to pick up a tiny bit of white just to give myself a little um, extra bump of brightness on this, on this edge so it doesn't get lost with that background. And that will... That will help me 
achieve that. And it looks like there's a little bit of extra lightness in through here on the photo, so I'm just gonna add a little bit of water down whatever's on my brush, <laughs> and then maybe a little bit extra little white right up here. It looks like it's shining a little bit more in through there. And then this is a little bit too um, solid of a color for me, and I feel it as though I should probably have a little bit of a um, darker line, maybe somewhere in through here. So just gonna put a little bit of black with water on my brush to break this up a little bit in through here. Yeah, that looks much better to me. And then once I've got that, just kinda make that the way that I want. There we go, just finessing it a little bit. Looks pretty good to me. Uh, maybe just a little bit more of that light blue right in through here. So I'm just watching my picture and I'm saying, okay, well, it's light. It's definitely pretty darn light in this front region. So I, I just want to emulate that. Um, and sometimes when you put that first layer on, you think it's what you want. And then as it's drying, it's, you know, it's drying a little bit lighter or a little bit darker than you had anticipated. So you just keep adjusting it until you've got those values and everything in it that you want. So it may not happen on the first shot. Um, it might take a minute to get to it, to get it into the finished place. On uh, the underside, I feel I also want a little bit more brown and white. Again, just because that's what I feel as though I'm seeing. So I just picked up a little bit more brown and white just to change that tone. There we go. So the eye, I'm going to wash and dry my brush. And the eye has very little detail to it. So I'm going to take a touch of brown and I'm going to give myself what would be the colored part of the eye. So this bottom kind of left hand corner is just getting a little bit of brown on it, which may turn too dark as it dries. So if it does, you can add a touch of white, but I would just go with it like that to start. Then you can pick up a touch of um, uh, cobalt blue with a teeny tiny touch of white and give yourself a little kind of glaze on the top side of the eye as if it is reflecting the sky. So right in through there will help with that. And then I wipe my brush off, pick up a tiny bit of white paint, give myself a sparkle over on this right hand side with white paint. And then the exterior where I put that initial ring, I can enhance that if I want to, um, just with little kind of taps of, you could use your light blue, you could use um, your brown, just any little kind of speckles of, um, of little t tiny feathers around that eye will help make that look a little bit more natural and just keep that black ring like inside the eye but outside of the colored parts that we put and that'll that'll make that look nice and natural so that's good for the eye um the head i'm going to put i want it to be light in through here so this is where i'm going to use red i'm going to actually use red, brown, and a tiny touch of white on my brush. And I'm gonna be kind of tapping it like this. I don't necessarily want it to read as red. So if it's going to red, just pick up a little bit of black and white, and that's going to give you almost like a, 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 a faint, almost, I don't wanna call it purple, but um, just a soft, muted kind of shiny color to the feathers and I have to apologize if I call these if I call this fur I'm sorry I have a problem with calling feathers fur <laughs> so um, I just am now just using the remnants on my brush to put um, some little extra um, fluff around here I want the lightest part to be where that cheek is though so as I'm doing this if I if I feel it's going too light I would just um, pick up a little bit more black with a touch of water my red and my white but just controlling that um, that vibrancy I do want it lighter than black but I don't necessarily want it red but in the photo I'm I, I'm detecting 
like a little hints of, of, of a reddish type of a hue. Um, on this underside of the chin, I'm gonna ju I just picked up a little bit of black and white to give myself some little, um, little feathers in through there. The top of the head, I can do um, black and white and maybe a little bit of blue. I think I'm gonna use maybe a touch of blue in order to give myself um, some, little, some little highlights up here, but I'm really just kind of tapping my brush right now to give myself some texture in this um, in these little feathers. It's definitely the darkest almost black in through here um, where it's going to meet the neck and in through maybe a little bit under there. So I'm just kind of going a little slow here so I don't um, so I don't do too much. So black with a tiny touch of white and again more black just you know controlling those those highlights so black and white a little bit in through here and then I definitely am going to come through with um, another layer of black but in the areas that really need it but right now just kind of making sure that I've got everywhere colored in the way that I want that I'm not missing any spots so right now I'm going to pick up black plus a little bit of water in order to um, take make sure those edges are fully um, painted now I think I'm going to pick up a little bit of cobalt blue and white because I feel as though I can get away with a couple of bluish dots up at the top in through there he's looking cute um, and maybe just a little bit more white and um, red on my dirty brush because I feel as though I want this a little bit lighter in through here so I just kind of again keep amping it up until it is um, the lightness that I want and it's given me the um, the volume that I want around the head again just kind of tapping with my brush to give myself these little these little polka dots um, and then once I've got the light areas tackled um, I can start adding or just making sure that all my my black areas are as black as I want them to be. So again, black and white are my dominant colors right now, but I can certainly add a little bit of the blue or a little bit of the red if I feel um, I, I, it, as I, if I feel it warrants um, a little shine. That's where, that's where those colors are going to um, be of benefit. They will add the shine to the black feathers. I'm washing my brush so I can get just black on it right now um, and just make sure that I've got all of these areas um, as transitioning into the black as much as I want them to. So just kind of tapping it in um, to intermingle that black. Make sure that it is as black as I want it to be. I feel like this should be nice and black right above that eye and in through here and then once I've got this done I may fiddle with it um, I think this needs a little black right in that beak right in through here um, I might fiddle, fiddle with it a little bit but I, I feel as though I'm pretty darn close it's so cute <laughs> it's so cute maybe a little bit darkness right in through here and then once I've got it done I'm going to be using my uh, number 10 round brush for the next step so once you've got this done, going to go into a little bit more brown and white. Um, you can put this brush away, take out the number 10 round, and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're going to do for the next step is we're going to finish the body of the bird. I am using my number 10 round brush. The colors I'm going to use are black, white, light yellow, orange, and brown. And if I use any other colors, I'll let you know. So this time I'm going to kind of go from dark to light. And I'm going to be enhancing the shadows underneath the this wing in through here, which you can't really see much of. But if I add a little bit of my orange and brown, it'll increase the depth in through there. Um, I just need to scoot another layer in this tail, maybe put a little bit of that orange and light yellow onto the tips of the tail and then put another layer in through here increasing the orange um, 
feel right around where those feathers kind of meet that neck as well as over here on the left hand side and we'll add a little bit more brown to to increase that um that depth or that um form on the bird and through here i'll be using both my orange and my light yellow to create a nice orangey yellowy <laughs> bird so i'm gonna start with my my darker ears. Oh, and we're going to do another layer on the wing, but that'll be with black and white. There's a little white um, little area here and a little lightness here, but that'll be black and white. So I'm going to start with some of my orange with a touch of brown on my brush. So orange and brown, this is going to get my uh, those dark tones to start to appear in what's going to be the little shadowy areas and you've got leaves that and flowers and stuff that you're working around now so it's okay if you bump into them because we're le I left them for last so we're gonna have we'll be able to hit those um, we'll be able to make any little corrections in those if we need to down underneath here I think I'm gonna pick up a little bit more brown on the tip of my brush just to kind of get a nice little shadowy area in through here and this again this is the underside of the bird so it's going to be shadowed anyways so I'm just that's the orange and the brown on my brush and then when I get down to the tail I just want some a second layer on here really so orange and brown is where I'm going to start and then I will come back when I've got the light tones on my brush and just put a couple of little highlights on there over um, on where the head meets the neck I'm gonna pick up some more orange with a touch of brown just again so I can increase this um, reddish kind of tone in through here so I um, have not picked up any white my orange there's no white in it my brown there's no white in it so my orange and my brown are transparent and they will um, they're see-through so you can put them right on top of the black and the black will show through. So as you're going through this and you're hitting the black, it's okay. That's just gonna um, allow for you to have great integration with those colors in that area. And then over here on the left-hand side, I think I'm gonna pick up more of the orange um, on my brush to get this color in through here. I'll, I'll put a little bit more brown down at the bottom, but right now I just kinda want some really dominant orange tones to to be created but I'm being cautious to not over paint all of that yellow because that yellow is going to be tough to get back if I paint this orange all on top of it so I'm just being mindful to leave um, some of that orange or some of the yellow showing as its own so that way I don't um, struggle with trying to get back that vibrancy in there probably could have brought that not so far down but or not so high up but that's okay um so again just picking up my orange right now allowing for some nice deep tones in through here even where it meets the the leaves down in through here we can put some more orange there that's gonna um increase that dimensional element of the belly so something like this and then over here on this left hand side if your orange is too yellowish you can certainly add more red to it so that'll be a judgment call on your part i'm going to pick up a little bit more brown to um, increase the shadows down in through here and this is also where i'm um, you know i'm mindful of the edge of my leaves and um, the edge of the body so i'm gonna pull some of these darker little marks out and again i'm using my directional brush stroke to make sure that i explain the 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 direction of the body and how it's formed I'm going to now wash my brush because I want to get that brown off if I I because I want to go into the light yellow if I was to still have brown on my brush and pick up that light yellow I probably have a greenish tone to it so I don't want that so I want to make sure that I get that brown off my brush right now if you were using more of a reddish tone brown you wouldn't run that risk as much as me but my my brown and my yellow definitely make a green tone so I just picked up some more of my light yellow so I'm gonna put my light yellow on first it pretty darn heavy 
I can even overlap it into some of that orange. I'm just kind of, again, pulling it down in that um, uh, directional brush stroke. I'm going to integrate some orange into it in a minute, but I want to just kind of uh, get this yellow on here so I make sure that I have good coverage. And now I can start um, picking up. You could even use deep yellow with the orange or you could just pick up orange. So I would recommend start with just picking up orange with your light yellow um, to integrate those, um, to get those sections to kind of overlap and talk to each other. And if that's too light or too soft looking for you, you could certainly just pick up some deep yellow um, and allow for that to be your connecting kind of um, tone between the light yellow and the orange. So again, those are the kind of decisions that as you're painting, you might find that, you know, the light yellow is still too, um, too soft for you. Um, you could, if I wanted to, this is where I could just wipe my brush off. And if that yellow is too pastel -y, I can pick up my deep yellow. So I can pick up that deep yellow and that's going to give me, you can see it gives me a deeper tone for that yellow. And you can integrate, you know, intermingle it with the light yellow color. So that way you've got those little pops of even brighter highlights from the, um, from the light yellow that we created. And then the orange and the um, deep yellow are going to give you these really rich tones to it. And you can, of course, overlap this uh, deep yellow on top of your um, your other sections and it's just going to allow for um, that te that wonderful rich textural element. I'm going to let this dry for a minute in through here um, because I might add a little bit more to it but I feel as though if I keep um, keep painting, I might over blend it. And if I over blend it, I've lost all the texture. So I don't want to lose the texture. So I'm going to, I'm going to give it a rest for a second, let it dry. While it's drying, I'm going to go put some little highlights on the tip of the tail. So I think I'm going to um, actually pick up light yellow, deep yellow, and orange, <laughs> and just kind of pop in a couple of little bright, um, little tiny tips down into here. So again, just kind of streaking it on there. So I've got some little highlights um, in through here. I don't really need to do much. And then I'm going to wash my brush to hit this wing. So washing and dry my brush. And the wing is black with a little bit of white on it. So I'm going to just start with black to make sure that I've got this kind of overlapping um, the other section where I want it to. And my first layer of black I used with um, water in it, so I already have a little bit of um, uh, streakiness or uh, different tones in it. Uh, so that benefited me, but I'm just right now making sure that I get everything covered in. Now I'm going to, you could, if you have a lot of paint on your brush, probably wash it, but I'm just going to wipe mine off because I want my white that I'm going into to maybe have a little backstroke with um, the black that's on my brush. And I'm just going to pick a little section down here, which is pretty close to where I think it is in the photograph. And I'm just really hardly touching my canvas to create this, this little white section. My black underneath is still a little wet. So this is allowing those two colors to really look like they are talking to each other. And then pick up a little bit more. And I'm gonna just kind of take this little white or this little yellow section and bring it down with a little bit of white like that. That looks pretty good. And then I feel as though I need this to kind of, um, this edge of the wing to kind of intermingle in this armpit area. So I'm going to just pick up a little bit of orange on my dirty brush and just pull a little, little strokes in through here. That was, that didn't work out. I'm washing my brush. The black on my brush was like, no, I want to take over. I washed my brush picking up a little bit of orange now. <laughs> this armpit area, wing pit, wing pit area. <laughs> You can make it, call it whatever you want, I guess. Um, 
and then in through here just intermingling these guys with a little bit of that orange and then I just kind of fiddle so what, what I would do is just kind of let it dry and if there's any areas like in through here that I felt could use a little bit more of the orangey tone I can put that in you could introduce some more red if you wanted to if you felt that a uh, little bit red, more reddish tone would benefit you in any areas. You can certainly pop, like I could pick up a, a tiny bit of red and just put it maybe even right where that um, where that collar kind of area is in order to again transition out from the black into the lighter tones and then you just kind of fiddle and put as many layers on it as you want. I feel like I need a, just a little bit more orange in through here. So I just picked up a little bit more orange and then I would just kind of keep layering it until I felt that I've got those tones the way that I want. I, I feel like I'm really pretty darn close, um, but I might fiddle with it for another minute or two. Just make sure that you're dark. You got a little dark shadow here. I just picked up a little bit more brown to increase this little shadow as it goes behind my um, my flower and you could also put a little extra dark tone in through here for that for that edge of that wing I think that's pretty good I'm, I think I'm gonna call it because I think it's I think it's good and I'm excited about it so we're gonna use this same brush for the next step so once you've got this done you can wash and dry the medium round and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're going to do for the next step is we're going to finish the flowers. We'll do the leaves and the stems in the next step. I'm going to be using my number 10 round, but I might need to switch to my smaller round it, it possibly. <laughs> but in my head right now, I'm going to use this brush. Um, I'm going to be using pink, white, cobalt blue, light blue, brown, orange, yellow, <laughs> and my beige. And if I use any other colors, I'll let you know. <laughs> so I really just want to have fun with these and give them some carefree petals um, and some little centers. But I do, I want to pop in it because what I'm seeing in the photo is there are some colored blossoms. There's some light pink ones and some purple ones. So we're going to create a purple um, color and we'll use, um, which I've already done on my palette, uh, I've used my pink with a little bit of cobalt blue in it and it makes this beautiful purple. So once I've got this color, I'm going to use that to put in a couple of purple blossoms. I've got, I see a couple of them, there's one over in through here and again remember have fun. You don't have to put yours exactly where mine are. I see one in through here, so we're going to just put that in through there. I'm going to just do these quick, like, layered um, appearance to them, and then we'll put some, um, we'll put a quick highlight on them later. There's a, I see a little one up in through here, so I'm just going to kind of pop it in there. I see one down here. Oh, you can put a couple down here, I'm thinking. Maybe. Maybe we've got a couple of them down here. I like, um, once I see a certain color uh, in it uh, being introduced, it's like, oh, I want to kind of put it in all other places, which is the beauty of painting. So as you're going through your process, um, especially when it's like a floral arrangement kind of thing like this, and you're finding a color that really speaks to you or you think it's super cool in the in the composition, just add it. Um, I see a, little, a couple of little pink ones up here. So I'm just gonna wipe my brush off and then I'm gonna pick up a little bit of pink plus white. So pink plus white is going on my brush right now. I see a pretty good size one in through here. And this is also the stage for space fillers. <laughs> so if you are going about it and and you're thinking, oh, I, you know, I really need some something over here. Well, ta-da, now we have a flower <laughs> over there. I like this pink over here. I feel as though I want to kind of carry it somewhere over here. I already had a little kind of mark in through here, so maybe we'll just put one right behind that beak. Uh, 
kind of enhance that little guy over there <laughs> and anywhere else you might feel that you want to want to put anything so that looks good for those while those are drying I'm going to wash and dry my brush and I'm going to um, put the second layer on my petals so when it goes to these petals again I'm not going for photorealism here I just want to give a little bit of dimension so it, in these flowers they kind of cup out um, and the, the the center of them can be shadowed but not because in this photo the sunshine is bright so it could have a shadow from somewhere it could not so this one for instance what I'm seeing is uh, so I can use lots of different colors here I can use my my light blue I can use my beige I could use brown so I think I'm gonna pick up a little bit of light blue plus brown and so let's say this this petal in through here I can take my light blue and brown and kind of put it over here on that um, kind of inside of the flower and then maybe pop it around the edge but leaving a little bit of the edge to, for a highlight from the sun. I could put a little bit of this darkness in through here and again I'm not going to bring them all the way. Um, then I pick up a little bit of white and maybe I illuminate the edge of that petal. Uh, maybe I pick up more of my light blue to finish off the inside of it. Um, but again, I'm kind of bringing it farther than it needs to be, but I want to show you how you can, if you are um, looking at the photo and you do want to emulate every single little petal, this would kind of be a pretty um, easy approach to take with, um, you've already got the base on there, now where's the shadows and, and the highlights to bring it into um, a kind of a three more three-dimensional type of appearance so this guy in through here this is like a mash of a couple of different um, petals so I'm gonna just pick up my light blue it looks like I had a little bit of cobalt blue on my palette as well looks like there's kind of a shadow in through here looks like there's a petal that we're seeing the outside of on this side so I can take and I can put a little bit darker area in through there so that's gonna show like the the under shadow side of it maybe pick up a little bit of my um, my beige plus my my blue so I'm really just kind of saying all right well there's a dark spot in through here it looks to be a little blue so that's where that's where I'm headed with that the other side of it looks like there's a little bit of maybe some shadow on these back little um, petals in through here again I'm just looking for a color pattern um, and if I if I see it great if not it's okay because once I start putting those little stamens on and all of these little um, these little edge details and stuff the um, those little nuances of all the interior shadows and stuff can you know seemingly not be as important so once I've got that maybe maybe I'm going into my dark blue too I didn't say I was gonna use my dark blue um, I feel like I could put a little bit of dark blue in through there as well. So that's kind of um, a more advanced way to approach those. You can certainly um, really be more carefree. Again, dark blue is where, where I'm headed. Maybe, maybe I've got an exterior petal here. We've got the inside of it there. We've got the inside of it here. And now I'm just going to pick up some, some white, maybe we've got the edge in through here picking up more white we've got a bright edge in through here just making sure I got it blended a little bit um, maybe that goes right down into there so you can have the petals that like this one it looks like the petal kind of curled up on the on the exterior of it and just changing those tones along the way is um, is what's going to separate those petals from one another and again I don't need to to go all the way I just kind of want to give it some sort of semblance to um, you know I'm using more of a of a carefree kind of approach I just picked up a little bit of brown to get the separation between those little petals but again it's hard for me to can, to not go all the way in through here I'm seeing some good shadows so I think I'm gonna go uh, brown plus my um, plus my light blue and just give myself some shadows in through here allowing for um, 
looks like there's just a whole bunch of little petals in through here so I'm just going to give some rounded edges some shadow underneath there I see some dark blue kind of shadow over here so again the dark blue is working as a nice shadow maker the dark blue plus a little bit of the brown um, is working out for a nice shadow maker for me uh, I see a little bit of darkness in through here and I'm also concentrating on multi multi colors on my brush in order to not get too hung up in the details it's so easy for me personally to get hung up in the details I'm picking up uh, dark blue plus light blue uh, there's some little light edges to some of these guys over in through here so that would help to um, kind of uh, get those edges to stand out if you wanted to around that green or something and then maybe in through here a little bit of brown to show separation between those couple of petals pick back up a little bit of my cream color my beige to maybe pop the the brightness on those um, those look I'm gonna put some centers on in a minute in there but I think I'm, I'm picking up some of my beige and white to uh, maybe just get a couple of edges on some of these and again I'm really just going carefree here if you feel that you uh, need to uh, make sure that yours is all really perfect and have every single petal exact exact that's a, a different approach it's one that um, w w will work and one that you can certainly um, develop but I'm t I'm treating this more as a nice kind of um, carefree style painting I feel like I want uh, there's gonna be a center to one here so I'm gonna just bring this edge out and this is also where I would take care of some like I feel this edge is unfinished so I picked up some of my my dark blue I feel like I could um, use dark blue and beige just to give the appearance of maybe um, a diff another petal over in through here so just the illusion maybe of um, of another petal maybe a little bit of brown and beige so I I'm feeling like down below here it's a little bit light so I'm just adding those darker tones in between some of these petals in order to um, provide a little bit more dimensional element down at the bottom and again just decisions I'm making on the fly as I'm looking at it saying oh well I feel like this could be dark darker in through here so although I'm saying I'm finishing the flowers I'm also I'm also finishing all these other little um, aspects around those flowers that are gonna not be um, hidden by the leaves that I am gonna do in a minute like in through here this is Kind of a lone soldier flower so what do I do with it maybe I can just kind of add some little exterior petals with a little bit of white on my brush I'll come back and put a center in there in a minute this one maybe is kind of um, allowing me to do it like that and again I'll put a little center on it in a minute over in through here maybe um, let's see here so maybe this one has uh, so I am um, going back and forth between white, light blue, beige, and brown. Those are those are my colors that I'm using right now um, in order to just accentuate, um, uh, fill in any little gaps, allow for any of these petals to kind of um, stand out in front of each other and again I'm not washing my brush so if I go about something um, and I get a little bit more brown on one or a little bit more blue on another one I'm so okay with that I feel like I want a center of one to go right here I'm also gonna um, kind of darken the centers or where I'm gonna want the centers to go so I just put a little bit of brown on my brush just to kind of start um, a couple of these little centers maybe one's gonna go over here I'm definitely gonna want one in through here uh, this guy not sure what's happening there so I'm just gonna pick up a little bit of white uh, I feel like I'll just make this guy part of this flower part of this one in through here 
So I'll make sure that that goes behind there. I'm going to pick up a little bit of brown just to tell myself that this is going to be a center. <laughs> so you can make your centers wherever you want. That looks good. Uh, I think I'm okay with that. And you can put a little shadow underneath one, leaning on the other one if you wanted to. That one's good. I think up here I want to add a little bit of my uh, light blue in through here. Maybe a little bit more white. So again, like this one in through here, I feel as though I've got a center to the flower um, right in here, but I also have kind of like a dark edge. So I'm picking up a little bit of that dark blue so I can make this little dark ripply edge to this uh, to this petal. So it's like we're seeing the outside and the inside of this one. And those, I think, are probably the most confusing things about um, flowers is how there's so much to them. Seeing the inside versus the outside, seeing, you know, the little stuff in the middle, all the shadows and the transparency in the, in the petals can be really confusing. Um, so allowing yourself to kind of just be carefree and um, this one up here I want um, a center somewhere in through here um, allowing yourself to be pretty carefree and um, having a I just want to make flower kind of approach which I love to have that kind of um, that kind of thought process I'm picking up dark blue plus um, light blue um, I think that allows you to be more carefree even though you you may you know really want it to be exactly i'm picking up cobalt blue plus light blue um you might desire it to be you know pretty close to the the photo or a specific type of flower for me i think just understanding what the characteristic is of that flower helps me work through a carefree painting so these flowers i'm seeing they have they, they're starting as pink and purple blossoms and then they turn into this white flower but they the flower itself has um, it, some of them have little um, these beige tones to them if I looked really closely I could probably see some purpley tones to them but I'm I'm allowing myself to just look at the shape of the the leaf allowing myself to just have these round type shaped leaves and not get hung up too much in the um, in the other detail of making every single one perfectly shaped I feel like I just want to add something up here and <laughs> so we're just gonna just gonna add something uh, I think that looks pretty good you could also use this kind of I'm using uh, light blue plus a little bit of cobalt blue you could certainly use that to enhance um, any or just put some additional blue uh, areas in if you felt that would be necessary. I think that looks pretty good. So I am going to wash my brush. I'm going to put some uh, centers on these flat. Well, before I put centers, I can hit these purple and pink ones. So I'm going to pick back up my purple plus a touch of white and give myself a little kind of highlight on this guy in through here and a little bit in through here. This guy, I think I want to add a little bit of my um, light blue as well. I'm going to pick up some of that cobalt blue and light blue. It looks like there's a, a nice little transition on this one, like that. There we go. And then on these guys up here, I'm going to just wash my brush and pick up pink and white. Pink and white. And just give myself a nice kind of couple of light areas on there just make sure that that's nice and done and then I also have um, the centers so I've got my brown I'm gonna start with my brown just make sure I've got idea of where I want those centers to go that one's already got it uh, little speckles in through there little speckles there oh definitely in through here so I'm just using a little bit of brown with the tip of my brush right now to um, give me some ideas of where I want these um, centers to go and just carefree messy carefree messy and then I'm going to um, this one definitely we're just gonna make that one a big center um, now I'm gonna pick up some of my orange not sure if I said I was using orange but I'm using orange to start these um, centers just kind of pop in these little 
dots um, and then I'll probably use my light yellow so just little tiny dots maybe this um, bird is in this tree because it color coordinates <laughs> with, the, with the little um, the little stamen stuff see you never know why a why a bird goes where it goes who knows maybe that's maybe that's its its mo and then i'm going to pick up oh right here too i missed this guy um then i'm going to pick up some light yellow hold on let me mess up my brush again mess it up <laughs> so i can just get those little specklies so now i'm picking up light yellow not sure if that's the color i said i was going to use but that's the color i'm using light yellow is just going to pop on a couple of nice bright spots for these and then at, once i'm done this um i might fiddle with it a little bit more i might not i'm not quite sure i've got to step away from it and see if there's anything more that i want to do but i'm just kind of speckling these centers um and i speckled them in a specific order uh, so that way they have that dimensional element to them and then once I've got this done I'm going to wash and dry this brush in preparation for the next step. Alright so what we're going to do for the next step is we're going to finish the leaves and the stems and the branch. I'm going to be using my number 10 round. The colors I'm going to use are red, black, white, brown, light green dark green green oxide and probably some light yellow and white if i use any other colors i'll let you know i think i called out all the ones i'm going to use i'm going to do the stem first or the branch so this is where i'm going to do something similar to what i did on the face of the bird which is the um red uh brown and a touch of black and white so that kind of reddish brownish color so something like this is going to illuminate or uh, put some great dimension in my branch again don't need to do a whole heck of a lot just something that's going to give it that dimensional element i'm going to pick up a tiny bit more uh white on my brush just a teeny tiny bit so i can get this bottom area just a little bit brighter there we go because it'll turn darker as it dries so just know that whatever you do when it's wet it'll be a little bit darker down here I'm going to do the same thing just pick up that little bit of red and a little bit of white if you want to just start there that's totally fine and then add a little bit of brown and or black into it whatever your process is just getting that little bit of a highlight on there is going to um, make it look a little bit more three-dimensional so once I've got that on, I can just start having fun with my leaves. <laughs> so I'm going to start with my dark and work my way to the light. Um, this again is going to be where I'm using my three shades of green, dark, dark green, green oxide, and my light green. And then if I want to add any additional like stems or um, veins or anything like that, I'll do that after I do this second coat. The, some of the ones up at the top, I kind of want to have a little bit more of a bluish tinge to them. So, oh, I'm also using cobalt blue. So this is where I can pick up my dark green plus a touch of cobalt blue on my brush at the same time. And I can add this more dimensional and um, um, uh, like a highlight, but keep it pushing it back by adding a little bit of blue to it that's going to make it look a little bit farther away than these leaves up front so the blue is going to turn is going to push it back and make it look it, like it's farther away from the viewer than um the bright or the the saturated green up front so that's where i'm using a little bit of blue plus my dark green on my brush for these top ones um, and then I will, the ones down at the bottom, I'll use more just the, um, the dark green for my second coat. So again, blue, uh, cobalt blue plus my dark green is where I'm headed for these guys back here. And I'm also now working around stuff. So this is a, a step where you might want to take a, you know, a cautious minute so you don't, um, like try and work from back to the front so that way 
as you're um, building these final little passes, you've got, um, if you bump into the stems, you can paint, correct them as you, as you go. I just put a little bit of black on my brush because I feel as though I want to pop this back a little bit further. So you, that the darkness of the black will help you to even push some of these a little bit farther back and give um, a little bit more shadow on them. I think that looks okay. Um, these guys up here, it's a little bit of, and they can make it look like shadow. That looks good. So now I have black on my brush, which I don't really want them on my brush as I come down here. So just wash my brush. I'm going to pick up that uh, dark green. And if you felt that you still wanted some of the, um, some of the blue on it as you come into here, that's totally fine. But that'll be your, your call. And again, just kind of putting the second layer on so um, so I uh, ensure good coverage and making sure that if I in a previous step had um, bumped into these or made them into a shape that I didn't want I feel as though I need to do something with this area too I'm going to pick up a tiny bit of black and my dark green with a little bit of water on my brush I just feel as though this needs a little bit more um, finessing so just a little bit, I want that beak to pop out a little bit more. So I'm just going to add a little bit more darkness into this area in through here. Yeah, that makes me happy. <laughs> and then pick up a little bit more of my mid-tone green, the green oxide, just to work away from there. And again, sometimes you just, you know, as you're, as you're doing something, it can, the, maybe your eye is being bothered by something and you need to do a, a cor not necessarily a correction, but you need to put another layer or um, get it so it's pleasing to your eye. I just picked up a little bit more of my dark green. I'm actually going to pick up a little bit of my uh, green oxide to just kind of filter this out. And I could break this up a little bit with my beige. So I just put a little bit of my beige on my brush too. So again, just kind of getting this to soften. So I don't know if I said I used beige, but I'm picking up, I picked it up. There we go. That makes me happier. So washing and dry my brush because I don't need the beige on my brush right now. Picking up some dark green uh, to make sure that I've got my second coat on these guys over in through here. And again, I'll add a little bit of lightness, but I want to make sure that I've got um, good coverage. That's one thing that I really um, do like to stress because I feel as though if you if you're spending this much time on doing a painting and you got all the pieces in place but it looks like you didn't finish it because you you missed the having full coverage on somewhere you've got one coat but then the second coat never made it to to the to the party and it looks unfinished. So I think that that for me is one of my um, one of my things that makes my painterly eye really nice and happy when I can say okay everything's got a good coverage even if it's not exactly as I had planned. Um, I feel like I want to pop this tail out too by putting maybe a dark leaf underneath it. So we're adding a leaf on the fly here um, because I want to. <laughs> so we're just we're just going for it um and again just another decision so i could get that tail to pop out a little bit more there we go and make that stem a little bit darker there we go but make sure it looks like i didn't paint around that tail so i'm going to just make sure i get that edge there we go um so that's just one of my things where i really think that it's important to make a, a conscious effort to um make your painting look like it's been fully executed, that you didn't miss any spots. You made sure you paid enough attention all over the painting. Like right here, looks unfinished to me. So I'm picking up a little bit of brown on my brush just to make sure that I've got whatever that is there, I want it to have good coverage. Maybe now I even pick up a little bit of my green oxide. So maybe it just turns into another kind of leaf. And that, for me, doing these type of paintings in a very carefree manner, that's where I have a hard time because I want to make sure everything is 
finished and perfect and I don't want to be carefree and I want my edges to be perfect so this is a great exercise in just kind of loosening up but still making sure that you've attended to everything that you should be attending to. I'm going to pick up more of my um, green oxide right in through here. This is going to hit this this leaf like this. This I need to bring it right up to that edge. Uh, anywhere else with my green oxide? Yep, right here. So we're going to hit that one and then right in through here making sure that that goes underneath. And then once I've got this second coat on, and while I'm doing this second coat, I'm looking. I'm, I'm, I'm watching for areas that um, need more than just the second coat. Again, I'm gonna add a little highlight um, and maybe a little shadow on these leaves or maybe a little some little vein work, but right now I'm just concentrating on getting this second coat on, but again, I'm watching. As I'm doing this second coat, I'm, I'm paying attention to, okay, well, this one's pretty good. I just need some veins on it. Okay, well, this one looks like it needs a little bit more um, attention or I need to go behind that, that leaf or that, um, that petal. So those are the things that I'm kind of being mindful of. I kind of want this side to be a little bit darker, so I'm picking up some dark green too. Um, and, you know, something like that where I just made the decision to add the dark green to this to this leaf. So you can certainly make those decisions all on your own, but um, just watching as you're going uh, helps you do that. I'm gonna pick up some light green now. So the light green is coming up into these guys, right into here. And now I can start to also be a little bit more carefree with my brush stroke, allowing for um, see like this little purple flower i didn't i didn't finish that little purple flower so oh i can also put this little um on these little buds i can put like little kind of leaves coming out underneath them that looks nice i've got these guys over here that are going to need something too so i'm just using that light green to create that i've got this guy in through here and you can see i'm starting to speed up because i feel as though um I'm, I'm getting, I'm, I'm accomplishing this second coat pretty well and I'm feeling like I'm just about ready to start being super carefree with my highlights and my shadows, um, but just want to kind of hit, make sure I've got all of these guys. Uh, this, this thing here, this one is going to be a big exterior one. I can see I must have had a little bit of dark green on my brush too because I just got some nice on the fly streaks down that one. That looks nice. I need a second coat on this guy. And again, you can see how the light green really makes a difference um, to the appearance of these of these leaves. So they're not just one tone. They look like they're being uh, they're like they're at different angles because of the highlights on them. I feel like I want this one to have some nice bright stuff and then Right now, I'm even starting to use a directional brush stroke to, to create little bits of the veins and stuff. And then that's my second coat. So now I'm going to start flying through with um, just little veins and um, little additive stuff. So I'm going to pick up some of my light yellow. I feel like I can... Oh, light yellow and white. Light yellow and white. I'm going to just hit some little bright spots. Light yellow and white. This is going to make my um my um ability to bring the sunshine into this is with this light yellow and white and you can make this really um dominant with the uh with the veins and stuff like that or not that's going to be up to you um i'm going to hit these light yellow and white areas and then i feel as though i need a uh pop some little shadows into some of the um, into some of those mid-tone ones. This is going to be a nice leaf in through there. And you can also, so something like this guy in through here, if I pick a little bit of light yellow and white, I can uh, just bring some of those uh, veins back towards the, um, towards the stem of the, of the um, leaf. And again, carefree, carefree. <laughs> that's, that's the name of this game right here is be carefree. Just, you know, allow for 
your eye to say, oh, I feel like ooh, maybe I want a, a, a vein on this one. And I can just kind of pull out, put a little skinny vein down the middle and then pull out some little exterior uh, veins, maybe a little highlight here and there. Just make sure I'm going for my full coverage everywhere. And if the yellow is too yellow for you, help help it out with the light green. So it doesn't just have to be yellow as your as your highlight. It can be yellow and your um, and your light green. Even the green oxide can be your highlight color when it comes to the darker ones. You could even use yellow, light yellow plus orange if you wanted to. This one over here looks like it's got a little bit of orangey type tone, so you can certainly add that into it. You can add brown into it. So wherever you're feeling that you want to incorporate more kind of earthy tones into it, like this one down here, I'm picking up some brown, and that's going to help to um, make that one almost look a little bit more down towards the shadows. Um, you can put brown in these, you know, in anything that you want. So now I'm, I feel as though I'm ready to start riding pretty carefree here. Um, I've got some nice highlights, uh, yellow, light yellow with a little bit of orange is giving me some beautiful highlights here, maybe with a little bit of white to accentuate that stem uh, in through here. I might pop, I'm popping a little bit more white on this uh, guy in through here, get him a little shinier, maybe a little bit extra lightness in through there. Uh, I need this guy right here to have a little bit of light uh, green right on the tip. So something like this is gonna allow for that to be a little bit brighter. And I think that looks good. Now I, I, I feel like uh, something like this, I need a little bit of dark green just to um, pop a little extra leaf or uh, vein or something in through there. Maybe this needs a little shadow in through here. So now it's I'm just fiddling. So I'm seeing all these little areas and I'm saying, oh, okay, well, I want that to pop out a little bit more. Or if I see a, a leaf in through here, my petal of my flower, oh, that's not done enough. So let me just pop a little bit of light, uh, my beige on it. This little guy in here I missed. Let's just put a little bit of um, my purple plus my beige on it and just make sure that that's taken care of. So that reminds me I need to get these guys in through here. <laughs> and then I'm just fiddling. So this is the fun part where you just get to kind of sit back and say, okay, I want a little little more darkness in through here. So I take my dark green, maybe a little bit of black and just make sure that that's got full coverage. Make sure that this has full coverage. And then we once you've got this done, we are gonna be using our small brush for the next step. So you can put this medium uh, round brush away, take out, see I need to finish this one in through here, take out a small detail brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so we are on to the final step. This is the final step of every painting, which is to sign it. So I typically sign mine in the bottom left or the bottom right. I think I'm going bottom left on this one with my dark blue. I like to sign mine with my initials, but you of course can sign yours however you want. You can sign it with your full name. You can make up a special symbol. You can sign it on the back. You can hide it in your painting. Whatever you want to do to identify your painting as your painting is totally up to you because those are the kind of decisions you get to make all on your own. And that's going to conclude this painting. I hope you enjoyed the process. I hope you painted yourself a very lively bird image. And I look forward to painting and sipping with you again sometime.